I'm just saying it's sponsored by Hover.com. Domain names made simple. Go to gfq.hover.com and get 10% off your entire purchase. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash gfq. Hey everybody, welcome to I'm Just Saying episode 89. 89. I thought it was episode 90, so did, so did you. I am uh, Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by Lon Blaze. How you doing, Lon? I am. Uh, I'm good. You're doing good. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I am. Uh, I am trimmer and and you are such all the time and tan. Yeah, well, very tan. Yeah, well, you know, out on the bike in the sun. Have you been tanning or? Uh, no, I just I've been um, every once in a while I'll go out and I'll bike slow so I'm not falling or anything without the shirt on so that I tan evenly because the uh, cyclist tan. Uh, sure. Uglier than the farmer. It's a little tan. bizarre, yeah. Oh yeah, you end up looking like sp- somewhere between a cross between a SpongeBob and a roll-on deodorant <laughs> container. <laughs> you know, because I have no, because my head is covered, uh, but not my arms from the sleeve to the wrist, and then not my knees to my ankles, but everything else is not tan. So I look like a do bizarre. You, do you go tanning at all? No. Never. Never have. Really? No. Nope. I thought you would. No. I'm a big tanner. I, I retain color for a really long time, so I go into the fall <laughs> uh-huh. you know, with a g- goodly amount of color. And I can go out in December and get 15 minutes of sun and get a, get a little color. You know what's the ready. problem? When you, um, when you drink and then you go tanning, because the tanning salon is right next to the bar I go to every Saturday. So I'll literally well, drink. Well, not every Saturday, Andrew. Uh, the one <laughs> Saturday you go there, I'm not there. Yeah. The one week. Now, how bizarre is that? I have to end up talking to the bartender the whole time. So what you do? You walked in and I wasn't there. Yeah. So what I did was, uh, you know, I'm, I allow myself uh, a sin per week. Um. So I, uh, I had, I had, uh, I didn't sin to the drink, but I had, a, I had a big old thing of French fries, mm-hmm. and I just enjoyed the crap out of them, and uh, they were great. French fries really are kind of, you know, there are a few things in my life that that rate up real close to sex. Okay. And French fries are one of them. Uh huh. Coffee is one of them. You know, sure. if you told me I could never have coffee again, you know, I think I'd be less upset saying someone someone telling me I would never have sex again than saying coffee. Uh, than coffee. Is that sick? Am I that old? But you know, because you know, at, it's coffee like loves me back. You know, it's like Aggie. Sure. No, it's, I, it's I like listen, everybody likes coffee. Right, and it just. You know, it gives me daily comfort. And, you know, while I would love to think I had sex every single day, I don't. But I have coffee every day. You know, I have coffee a couple times a day. I wish uh, I had sex as much as I had coffee. Yeah, I guess everybody could do that, right? Everybody yeah. thinks that. Yeah. I don't Absolutely. know. Absolutely. I, I haven't had coffee in like three days. Today was the first day that I had it. And it was a little weird for me because like I've been getting a little shaky because I haven't had coffee. Any reason why you haven't had the coffee? Uh, no, I just haven't had coffee in the house. I wish you could come out to, to the end of the trip because it just seems like if I'm going to have a drinking partner, it really should be you. And I'm, uh, I am abstaining from drink until the last day of the ride. And so how long is that going to be? Well, I, have, I really haven't had a drink since the party, January, okay. January 7th. Okay. And I will be having um, much margarita uh, on... Much, ju- <laughs> much June- more. Uh, on June 9th. Well, that's that's not bad. It's like five months. Yeah, six months, five months. I couldn't do that. I know. This Saturday was the first time that I didn't go drinking. Yeah. Um, and and how do you feel? And it was a little bizarre for me. I, it was a little weird. I I normally I go to the bar every uh, every Saturday. By the way, guys, we're having some audio issues. I don't know why something changed in my setup where I'm super loud now in my headphones. Not really. He's just this loud. I can't figure out what's going on with it. Oh, there. I think that's a little better. Maybe, um, maybe you had a drink. No, I don't know. But I didn't go to press this Saturday, and everybody was worried. They thought I died. So you you went there, and you were like, "Where is Andrew?" Yeah, I just you know I, and and what's so funny was it. I don't ever go you know hang out with you with an agenda, but I did have like a couple of things to talk to you about, and and I was like, I can't believe he's not here. He's, yeah, because you know when it gets to this point, like near the ride. Every minute, even my pleasure is scheduled out really well. 
and you just totally threw a monkey wrench on in that whole thing. <laughs> I was like, okay. I mean, I planned to have yeah. the French fries, so I did that. But I also planned to have like another hour there. But you know, once I ate the French fries, I was sitting there by myself, and I was. Did you think I was going to show up? Kinda. Like you went there what time? Like eleven thirty? No, 12? no, no, no. I got there late. I figured I'd get you. You know, mid buzz. I got there at like one thirty. Oh yeah, I would so be I, that. I would be loaded then. You yeah. could get me to do anything. Right. That's that's what I was going for. Yeah. I thought you'd buy me a pony or something. <laughs> you know, um, uh, and you just didn't. And then I found myself with like an extra hour, and you should have seen me. It was like I was freaking out because I because I had an extra hour. My schedule is so. I mean, I have okay. Between now and then, I have to. Um ship things like a couple of places because everything's so expensive so my days that i'm relaxing in uh in like la i'm sending a box of clothes to a friend of mine so i can just have you know and i'm not carrying them around with me mm-hmm. and they're getting all wrinkled so i'm sending a box of clothes there then n- by next thursday i have to ship the bike because the bike takes you know five to seven business days to get to san francisco and that's going to another friend's house that i'm staying at then i have to um then I have to have, you know, take the bike to the shop to get packed into a box before I take it to FedEx. You know what I mean? I have to have it packed in. And then uh, the week before I leave, now I'll be doing all my mileage on my recumbent bike in the basement. I might pull it out into the to the sun and just ride my miles there. By the way, I rode 50 miles today in one hour and 19 minutes. That's not bad. Excuse me. No, no, no. no. Two hours and 19 minutes. Whoa, whoa. Two hours and 19 minutes. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. Yeah. So are you are you pumped? Are you excited? Are you nervous? For yeah, because I think I feel like even though I've done all this riding, I think I'm in better shape now than I've ever been for any ride. So I'm kind of excited to see how that. Uh, I'm that trying to think. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think I, I think I really am. I think because I think I was able to ride before, had the skill to ride before, even the strength to ride before. Now I can kind of finesse it. I'm like, I'm looking at you know the first day is 82 miles. Not any really big hills. And I want to see, can I get those 82 miles like in six hours? You know, with, you know. How's the donations going? Uh, I, I went in and got my thing. I really would love to break my record. And no donations count after May 18th. Um, so you have four ta- days. Count towards the, when I say count, I mean, they'll take donations straight through a month after the ride. But in terms of, you know, um, the prizes that I can win yeah. and, um that sort of thing. Uh, I missed on the hat. I really suck because I got really great socks and there was a matching hat and I missed out on that. I hope I can buy one, but it seems silly to, if you're able to buy one if you know you work so hard. Mm-hmm. To, but I would love to. Bike bike hats are kind of weird. They're kind of goofy. But I have like, what I've done is I packed a bag a week ago and I keep taking one thing out at a time going, I don't need that. I don't need that. Well, how long are you going to be gone for? I, I mean, what's well, the time I have, frame? I have, in essence, two days of pleasure in San Francisco and then the ride. Which so is you go in a little early. You're going to hang out two a days, little bit. Two days early, a week of ride, two days in L.A. afterwards. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Because I have a lot of friends out there, so I want to see that. I actually think for the first time, I'm actually going to have people waiting for me at the actual end of the ride. This ride is Joe going away when you're away? No, she isn't. She's gonna okay. she's gonna hang here. Normally, I know she goes away. Yeah, she'll do something, but uh, she's not this time because the whole travel business thing is like kind of kicking in. Oh, that's she, good. She qualified for a free cruise. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah so I'm, yeah, Jess uh, and I are actually uh, talking about going on a cruise. Uh, There's some new ship. Jess, what's that cruise ship? The new one you were looking at yesterday. It's apparently there's some new cruise ship. And uh, it, it's like crazy, crazy. Talk to Joe about uh, like it. Like the rooms are like insane. Oh, cool. Talk to Joe about it. Yeah. See, if she, see what she can do. Um, oh, I had something and I lost it. Uh, so the week, the week before I take off, I do things like I get waxed. I get, um, uh, I get a manicure and a pedicure because really a, a pedicure is really good for the bike shoes. You know, it sounds really funny, mm-hmm. uh, but I am now totally booked. I am not staying in a tent one night of the ride. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Are you I've, staying in hotels or are you I've, staying over people's places? Yes. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. Okay. Yeah. Um, that I'm staying in a hotel the night of the 107 mile day. And that's cool because to me, that's like, 
I'm done. That's the night that I will call in to you from like before the last like 10 miles because the yeah. show will be on. Then I'll do the, like 10 more miles. I'll probably finish up between like five and six that day. I will go. I will take, I always take a cold shower first because if I take a warm shower, I'll fall asleep. I'll take a cold shower. I will eat something and then I will collapse and die until the next morning because a hundred, you know, 107 miles would just, just takes it out of you. Oh, I could imagine. I mean, I, I, I would imagine there's a certain point that you're biking. You're like, I just, I just want to go back to the hotel. I just want to be done. Like who would know? I could go and I could tell people that I did it. Well, here's the here's the, the the bad thing too. Oh, I have to tell you about the remind me to tell you about the okay, the two parties there have been for the ride already. Um, you can on this ride, mm-hmm. you can stop, and a car will go by and they'll say, "Are you okay?" And you'll go, "No," and they will pick you up and they will take you to the end. Oh, so you could cheat? Yeah, you can. It's yeah. called it's called getting swept. Oh, that's really so. People do that all the time. They just cheat at it. Um, yeah. Well, they realize there's no contest. It's not a. It's not a race. People are just covering the miles. You know what I mean? It's a tour, and and there are people that just go. You know what? I've had it. I've had it. You know, and I just can't. I can't. I can't give in. I haven't yet. I would just give up. I would just go to California, go with my bicycle, ship it, and then I would just tell people that uh, I had a great ride and and I finished second. Well. You know, you, you know, it's me and 2,500 gay guys, you know, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the, the boys refer to when you don't stay in the tents as being on the princess tour. So I'm on the princess tour this year, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is pretty funny. But you know well, what? I will, I will eat the meals there because it's just too much fun. You know, it's too entertaining. And I've paid for the meals, basically. I would imagine that it would get... um It gets hysterical. A little, little overwhelming. Too. Well, you know what's really funny, though? What's really funny is they all talk a big game about, ooh, it's night, you know, and all the boys are together. Yeah. And, and like at nine o'clock, they're like, oh, oh and at 9.15, this is what you hear. <laughs> you know, they're all asleep, you know, because they've biked all day. You know, it doesn't matter what you think. I don't know. I, I, I imagine it being just there are a lot of people that cheat and there's a lot of people that finish and there's a lot of people that finish really late. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, who's like the last person who oh, finishes they're having on the a, ride? They're having a party this year for the last arriver they've never oh, done it fine. before i think so it's who great. is him it's like it's generally someone who like a, just, he's missing a leg yeah that kind of missing a leg or he's 104 or 104 and missing a leg uh-huh. but generally the guy that's 104 and missing the leg kicks my ass you know what i mean because he's like uber cyclist you know he just just will do that so there's been two like a lot of people that are new york riders there's a whole contingent that goes out to to uh, California from New York. They even have like a Facebook page. Well, last Saturday, one of them had, the reason I couldn't be at press that week was I was at a bar crawl myself in Williamsburg and I was hitting all the um, gay and lesbian friendly uh, bars in Williamsburg. Okay. So a lot of fun. It was me, 15 gay guys, a couple of gay girls and a few girls uh, hang on, you know, the, the really good friends of the gay guys. Yeah. So I'm going along and um, what I love is that, you know, guys, gaydar is really, you know, gay guys, gaydar is just great because none of them went, oh, you know, no, none of them assumed I was gay. Yeah. Unfortunately for you, it's all the straight men that think you're a guy. Right. Um, but <laughs> there are these two women at some point they're arguing because one of them is like thinking about going back with her old boyfriend. The other one is going, no, no, no. And one of the guys, one of the gay guys knows me, knows I'm married. And says, you should talk to him. He's been married forever. Like, he knows how to do it right. So they bring me over, okay? They know I'm married, okay? Mm-hmm. They, they're they going, should I take this back? To and then I, you know, I, I gave what has worked for me. You know, not this is what you should do, what works for me. And they listen to me and listen to me. And then one of the lesbian girls pipes in about how, you know, she's lucky she doesn't have to deal with a man, rada, 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 okay? So this goes on for a bit, and now we're all chatting, and then we go to the second place, and we're chatting and stuff. We go to a third place, and I have to leave because I, to, I go to a Cinco de Mayo party that night. So as I'm getting to leave, people go, do you have a flyer we want to donate to you? And I went, sure. So I gave them my flyer and everything, and I gave one of the flyers to the lesbian girl who was mouthing off. Okay. Okay. She was really funny. And I mean, she wasn't mouthing off bad. She was just like, you know. She like a big lesbian or was she like? No, she was one of those sporty lesbians, you know. 
um the ones that look like runners in the olympics and swimmers yeah tennis players maybe okay so i hand them the flyer okay and as i'm leaving the lesbian girl goes oh you can take this back because she's my roommate so you don't have to have one i went no no you can keep because i had a thousand of them you know i print them up she went no 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 take it back okay she gave me her phone number (laughs) (laughs) it's excellent I, I, I am Joanne's hysterical because I said, so I met this gay lesbian bar crawl, hun, and guess what happened? And she said without pause, the lesbian gave, lesbian gave you her phone yeah. number. I went, yeah, this happens to me all the time. I'm like, I'm like the deviation for lesbian girls. That's hysterical. Okay. Too funny. So Wednesday night, there's another gathering because one of the big mucky mucks from the organizing party out there in California was in New York. And um, I walk in, <clears throat> and now now this party, it's 40 gay guys and me. Okay? So is this all for the ride? Yeah. So is it, the reason how many How many people are riding? 2,500. So from all over the country. But um, it's mostly the, largely east, the Cal- East Coast no, large, and West Coast. L- largely California. And some New York. Yeah. Okay, so there's but enough there are people, in New York. I've met people from all over. I've met people from Canada. I've met people from other countries. But there's enough in New York to have like a party for. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I go in and the guy that had the bar crawl is there. He giggles about, you know, the fact that the lesbian, he said, I found out the lesbian gave you the number. I went, yeah. Um, so we're talking and talking and he brings up the fact that I own a boot camp. At that point, another guy has come in and he spins around. And he's like, oh, boot camp. Ooh, and he asked me all about the boot camp. And this guy, for the first time, is interested in me. Big time. He is very interested oh, in me. Oh, because he thinks now you're gay. Yeah, okay. because I'm in a room full of only gay men and I'm talking about working out, you know. So he is a part owner in a, of a spin place in the city. You know, a bike, a bike spin. How do they do those places? I think they do okay. I mean, do I, people go spin? You know. Yeah, there are people that are addicted to any one thing. You know, there are people who are addicted to the boot camp. You know, thank God. Yeah. Um. So. So we're talking and talking, and at one point, I said, I said, I said, the only thing that's bad about it is that my wife doesn't go there. I said, you know, because she does, you know, Pilates and and gyrotonics and stuff. And he, this guy, pauses and he goes, "Wife, like girl wife," and I went. Yeah. And he looked at me and he goes, I don't even know what to say to that. Uh, that's a story. <laughs> so he meets my wife later and it was like he was like, Oh, you're a lucky girl. <laughs> so Is I, Joe is is Joe involved with the bike stuff? Is she like No, she helps me fundraise and that sort yeah. that sort of thing. And uh, uh I'm oh I'm having the garage sale again Saturday. Oh, you're doing it this week? Yeah, and the garage sale basically goes to pay for like my bike shirts. What are you selling? Anything? Anything that, that I I can find in the house, you know. So I bought that I bought that uh thing from you last time, like the kickboxing. Yeah. Thing, which is hysterical because we put three of them in the boot camp. I never right? used it. You never use it. It's sitting in my attic. There I bought. Them. I'm like, I'm gonna use this. You should. What? They're great. I know it is. You know, I I wanted to talk to you about something because uh, a couple of weeks ago we started talking about history and mm-hmm. and, and things that happen in history and mm-hmm. um. I got an email from a viewer and they were saying, you know, uh, th- they're from the Midwest and they find it amazing that the World Trade Center has not been built yet. And it's taken them this long to plan it out and to build the tower. But he was asking why New Yorkers are so excited right now for an incomplete building. Because if you see, and he's right, if you watch the news, they're talking about the tower, about the new, uh, the Freedom Tower. Well, I think every day it, the structure has just surpassed you know the height of the other building but it's not done but it's you know but it's up there it's half empty i mean like they haven't they haven't finished it and i, and I was thinking i'm like you know what this guy has a point they haven't built the thing and they built the other one okay well the uh, the the, the, uh, the choices are to be excited that it's being built or to be depressed by it i would save it i would save excitement and depression till it's built but but they'll turn a story into anything you know if we debate this long enough, they'll go. They'll they'll start to have debates about it, you know, just so they can have news time. Well, I've been watching. Um, uh, it was CNN, and this guy uh, had called in, and and the guy kind of sent me a link to it. He was saying how, um, you know, they're, they're they're talking about the tower, and they're saying how it's the biggest tower in New York, which technically it's not. It's just that needle that they put up on top that makes it taller, but it's really not really the tallest one. 
And he was talking about how the original, the two buildings were built in like seven years. Right. Yeah, you'd mentioned in this. the 70s. Right. And I, he was talking about that. And he was saying how it's amazing that, you know, we still don't have it. Because the logistics of building a building in New York have become so have complicated. Changed. Yeah. Plus the financial arrangements to do this are so complex the the you know you're talking about doing something for the benefit and honor and prestige of being that tower in that space and at the same time there are you know at the end of the day it's all about money it it, it is it's, it's really funny because uh in the same email he writes uh so i'm sure you see it every day and i wrote back i'm like no i don't he goes but don't, don't you live in new york and i was I'm like yeah but i'm in new york city but i'm so out of there where I don't even see it. even when I go into Manhattan, I don't see it. Like I'm, I'm all the I way. I see in, it on the way in, you going through the, the midtown. In. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're taking like the 59th Street Bridge, and it's got to be a clear day. You're not going to see so it. And it's so far downtown that you don't realize it's as big as it is. You kind of have to go. Oh yeah, it's. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Lon. Like I don't even know. Like I don't know anything. I think the city building, the Citibank building, is yeah. the World Trade Center. Every time I go in, <laughs> I think the Empire State Building is a Sears Tower. I, I know nothing. Like I, the I look Sears at Tower isn't even called the Sears Tower anymore. Yeah, it's, it's it's like another. I'm sorry. I think it it needs to stay that name. Well, I I was going to the city and and I love when someone you know I'm with someone from outside of New York and they're like, oh, what what is that? Is that? And I'm like, that's the World Trade Center right there, and it's not. It, it's it's some building. It's some regular building. Do you know there's a, there's one building that came up at the Bank of America building? It's right near the Empire State Building in the skyline. It's like the sixth, the highest building in the world. No one cares about but it. But it's the sixth. So it's like, it went up like two or three years ago, completely unceremonious. I don't believe in buildings. <laughs> you don't believe in buildings? No. And by the way, it looks just like the new twin, ta- the new, uh, the, the World Trade Center. Like it looks just like it's, it's the same design. It's the same pointy look. No one cares about it. No one cares. It's a Bank of America building. Not, not one person ever talks about this I don't thing. know if it's about no one cares. I think it's that you care too much about it. It just finished. 2009. I've never heard of this thing. Oh, the, oh, the, um, the Bank of America yeah. building? Yeah. One Brian Park. Yeah. Nobody cares about it. No. It's a beautiful building. Not, n- never heard of anything I bet if it. you ever asked New Yorkers about the Bank of America building, they'd be like, what? I think they wouldn't know. Uh, no. I don't think most people know in New York like where the village is, where Soho is. Like they, I don't think they most all know people it's know. there. I don't think people know the juxtapose of. The they don't. Village. No, nobody knows where it is. What I love is that they rename areas. Like Hell's Kitchen was really bad, and then they renamed it Clinton. Is that what it is? Wait, now? but wait, but wait, wait. They renamed it Clinton, and then people went, "But Hell's Hell's Kitchen is cool." Like even and the rich people back. that wanted to live there wanted to live in Hell's Kitchen. Well, it's like art scene. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like, like the meat, it's like the meatpacking district. Well, it's all it's all clubs there. Yeah, the meatpacking district. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, but they refer to it as the meatpacking district still. What is it supposed to be called? Is there no, like no, an no. It is. Name? It, it, no, it is. But what it, what I'm saying is, it's cool to call it. I mean, for years, Joe and I would tease because whenever it was referred to, it's like um, those all those um, adjective phrases that come before words in People magazine. John Lennon was never in. People magazine is John Lennon. He was always slain ex Beatle John Lennon. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so it's always the trendy and exciting meatpacking district. It's not just the meatpacking district, it's the trendy and exciting meatpacking district. I It's Manhattan's a funny thing. Like, I, I was in the cab and the guy was from Harlem and he's like, I can't even afford it anymore. And it's still a shithole. Like, it's not that great. There's like maybe like one, one or two blocks there's a, there's a, that are really good. Right. That's how the gentrification happens. Yeah, they, they spread it. Right. And then crappy houses become so expensive that the only people that can buy them are rich people who renovate them and then the whole area turns over. It's always the, the artists or the or the or the working class always goes in there first and then they'll reclaim a neighborhood. It happened in Astoria. Astoria got well, Astoria real bad. is really shitty still. Yeah, not like it was. And Astoria got real bad and then the Greeks came in. Astoria like Joe lived in Astoria and then it went to a couple of other ethnic groups that weren't as desirable. Oh, really? It dropped oh, yeah. that and the Greeks came in. And then the, the Greeks, Greeks came in because yeah. the, the property values dropped so much and then the Greeks bought everything. Oh, I didn't that, know that. Oh, yeah. But it's not like that anymore. They right. sold. It's like halal meat markets. Well, because that down. what happened was the Greeks, you know, the population keeps moving further out on the island. The Italians moved further out on the island. The Irish moved further out on the island. Yeah. Like you have a lot of Greeks in Little Neck. 
and they're moving out to where do like you end Man up going? Hassett, and you end up going to into NASA to like fancier and fancier places. The story is still not great, though. I mean, I I can't. I don't know. Comparatively, I've, there's some really nice parts of Astoria, but Astoria is in that place now where people, young people out of school, are getting apartments that they're just getting into. It's really expensive, and the next step is someone will come in and renovate that building, and Astoria will be soon like a shishi area because man can, Manhattan can't hold all the chic people anymore. It used to be like if you didn't live on Manhattan, you didn't count. Well, no, I I don't go to Queens. Right, people still didn't. say that. I had a meeting with somebody, and, and this just shows you the pretentiousness of New York Manhattanites. Oh, yeah. I had a meeting with somebody uh, to do a website, and they're from Manhattan. And we were talking on the phone. He goes, yeah, uh, I want to hire you, but I don't go to Queens. I'm like, that, that's fine. He's like, well, how are we going to meet? Well, they say it like a badge of honor. Yeah, I, I don't go to Queens. And, and you know like what he's saying? I don't watch TV. She goes... Uh, I, if you want, I can meet you in Brooklyn. And I'm thinking, I'm like, am I not invited to Manhattan? And I said, well, no, I'm in the city all the time. He goes, oh, you come into Manhattan? Yeah. Well, and I should. Just... And I was thinking, I'm like, you're an idiot. Number one. <laughs> number two. Why don't you come to Queens? I don't go to Queens. Oh no, I won't go to Queens. I live in Manhattan. Now, I pay. Five thousand dollars for a hundred square foot apartment. Do you know what the average apartment? Did you hear the? It's the like four grand, right? Yeah, just shy of four grand. Yeah, it's like thirty nine. And what's the size? Um, it, that's like a one bedroom. Like and the average, the average feet. studio, the average studio is two thousand. That's out. Of, that's out of control. Well, a studio apartment here goes for about a thousand. In Queens. In Queens, where we are. Yeah. So I, I mean, that's not that crazy. I feel so lucky to have a house. I really do. Uh, that's, can you? That's uh, half my retirement. Plan. I mean, you lived in an apartment for a while. We lived in an apartment for 18, 19 years. People wonder like how people do it. Like, how do people live in Manhattan apartments? Like, you're giving up so much. Well, you know, a lot of it, people do, like when when the when the son or daughter moves into their own apartment, half their crap is still back at their parents' house mm. because their parents have a house. You know, yeah. and then what will happen? A lot of things is generational. The parents will move to Florida, and the kids and the will kids take, will take, take the, the house. house. Yeah, well, that's how it works. I I can't. I Manhattan is all right. I get it. I like it, mm-hmm. but it's a different culture. It really is. I I've mean, wa- I've wanted to. Retire and depends there. on what side of it. Like, if you're on the east side, it's totally different oh. from like Soho or the Upper West Side. Even like the I, West, the, the Upper so- West Side and the Upper East Side are so different to me soho is like um i'm i'm i make thirty thousand my parents give me thirty thousand i I dress homeless i look like i dress homeless but i'm spending the entire day at starbucks and i live in an apartment that costs me about four thousand a month yep and it's the size of a shoebox that's but, Soho. You know Everybody what, looks like they smell. But you know what's really you know what really sucks about it is that there's a handful of people that will come out of that experience, really you know, trendsetters and that sort of thing. It's just that, it's like, I, I'm at the age now where a bunch of my friends who were gonna be someone, like they were almost there. Yep. Like theater actors, the, the, artists, theater actors, artists, just even like composers. You know. They came damn close a bunch of times. And when you don't make it, what is there left? I mean, because there are people that, and I kind of understand it, they would not do anything else because to water down the dream meant that they were that they were buying in. But some of them just haven't made it, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I'm beginning to see the the start of crazy cat ladies oh, it's and, starting now, and yeah. weird guy. So what do they do? I mean, they're still like odd odds and ends. Type yeah, stuff. I mean, I I have a friend that no Joe has a friend that lives in on the Upper East Side on like East Ninetieth, and she is paying a fortune. Like, and she has family in the Bronx, and she just refuses to give in. And I kind of understand like not wanting to move back home. Would be the best thing. Well, for if you her. live in the Bronx, I wouldn't want to move back home either. Well, there, again, there are nice areas in the Bronx too. I don't know the Bronx as well, very honestly. Well, I mean, like Riverdale, yeah. that area. Yeah, that's where it, Joe it's, went it's to school. It's pretty nice. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad area at all. It's far, like it's like upstate. It's like up. But I mean, I can't, I can't imagine living there. I think, I, 
like if you're in the Bronx, you're surrounded by awfulness. You really don't have an escape. Like your only escape is like you got to pass through Yonkers to get there. So you're kind of surrounded on every side. There is some nice stuff like Pelham. Like that's a nice area in the Bronx. But I mean, Brooklyn, what areas are great in Brooklyn? Um, I'm not counting Williamsburg. Williamsburg is just being developed. Yeah. Like Park Slope is nice now. But that was an awful place. Every place was awful at one point. Yeah, that's where like families go, right? Like Park Slope. Yeah. They all have like a like a special needs kid that doesn't that only has soy. He's on a soy diet. And they're very picky about their recycling and they're all involved with the neighbors are doing. And they all go very to Pilates honestly, and one yoga. One of the things I always find so weird is that the people that like some of the biggest vegans and naturalists that I know live in Manhattan, live in the city, live in Brooklyn. And I'm like why don't you live on a farm? Why don't you, you know, if you're that big into like animal rights, why aren't you out where there's some Island animals? Staten Island is still farms. You can move to Staten Island. And that. You can move there. You'll be so far away from everything. Nobody wants to go near you. Staten Island is still underdeveloped. I mean, if you, there are parts of Staten Island, it's just forests. Yeah, but the parts that are developed are just so, there's like mega slabs. It's of, depressing, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Sorry, Staten Island, man. It's really depressing. It's a depressing place. It's like the Jersey Shore with half the charm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And half the literacy. Unfortunately for them. I know. You know what's so funny? As I, It was a farm Joe, colony. Joe, Joe, has, know people know Joe, Joe has family from Staten Island. I'm sorry. And a couple of them, the cousins, are brilliant. But they talk like they're from Staten Island. You know? Do you know how many people live there? 450,000. That's it? That's it. Nobody lives there. Queens? Staten Island, Staten Island has what? And it's like a third of the size of Staten Island? Well, Staten I'll give you Island one example. Huge. Manhattan is 23 square miles. Yeah. Okay, that's it. 1.6 million. It actually went down. Huh? Yeah. Remember, it was 1.8. It's It's yeah. gone down. The Bronx, 42 square miles. Uh -huh. 1.3 million. Almost 1.4. Yeah. Brooklyn, 2.5 million. What? 71 square miles. Mm-hmm. Uh, Queens, 2.2, 2, 109 square miles. Okay. Staten Island, 58 square miles, not even a half a million. Wow. Nobody lives there. Wow. Why would you know they? there are deer there. I'm sure. And they probably have tuberculosis because that's what <laughs> that's what Staten Island was. It was a tuberculosis they, they, island. They beg for change. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. People those, that really don't with know those, that. With those diner cups. The purpose of Staten Island was... To take your sick people and dump them there because they're so far away they can't affect anybody else. Yeah, because there was no bridges. There was no bridges until like the sixties. Well, there was the, the the there was a bridge into Jersey that you could like go in. Yeah, yeah. But you can't. So they would take like if you had tuberculosis, if you had uh, measles, you had rubella, which is my favorite disease, by the way. Rubella. Rubella. Of all the diseases. of all the diseases. Rubella, because of the MMR shot, the measles, mumps, and rubella shot. Favorite disease, rubella. I wish rubella onto people. When I see them, I don't, I don't hope they die. I don't say anything. But I say, I hope you get a rubella. Or sometimes I wish, like these, these hipsters that don't vaccinate their kids, mm -hmm. I wish rubella onto their kids. That's how I get back at them. Because they know. These are things that they think. Like, they, they understand. Like, I, a lot of these people that don't vaccinate their kids... They pretend that like they're all high and above vac so vaccinated. So when was the kids. last time you wished rubella on someone? Probably last week. Yeah. Yeah. Who in particular? I was at the bar. I was at, actually Dave. Probably heard me. I was screaming. I hope you get rubella. I hope you get infected with rubella. It was some hipster. Okay. Remember, I get into fights. Andrew, there. remember a minute ago I said you know my friends are now at that age where I worry you know now they're becoming the crazy <laughs> hey, cat lady. Yeah. You're already the weird old guy. What I love yeah. is that I am I am twenty some odd years your your senior and you are the, the weird, weird old guy. Do you I sit get, on your porch and yell at people? No, but I yell at people at the bar. I get really angry. I start drinking. Do you do do, do you um do you interrupt conversations? No, I, you know what happens with me. I'll, I'll mind my business. Like I go, let's say uh, Adam from Lunatic Radio will show up, or somebody from you know. There's always somebody from GFQ that stops by because I'm so readily available. There. It's like the cheers of GFQ. It is. I take my appointments there too, and. They'll always be by by the end because I'm there for so long. The the drunk guys that are there also start mm -hmm. talking to me, uh, and they go. get really they get aggressive if you don't agree with them. 
and they'll say something stupid and they want to talk about the Rangers, for example. And I'll say, I don't really watch hockey. Like, I get it. Like, I'll watch because the Rangers are in there. He goes, well, you're a front runner. They'll say something like that. And I'll say, well, I don't really watch hockey, but since they're New York, I'll support him. He goes, well, that's a stupid thing to say. And then they'll like want to fight with you. And then I'll wish rubella onto them. And then they don't even know what rubella is because they're just idiots. But he plays for the for yeah. the for the devils. Hey, he plays he plays for, for the, the Canucks, devil. doesn't he? Mark Rubella. Mark Rubella. <laughs> I was gonna go there too. They're always Mark Rubella. <laughs> Mark something. They're always named Mark. Always. I get so mad. But rubella is a fun disease to wish on people. I'll have to try. It's a it. very fun disease. You know what you should do curry. when you're biking? Just scream. Like when you pass someone, just scream. I hope your kid gets rubella. Like uh, uh, they won't know what to do. Yeah, you, people go. You know, I, I I wish you were dead. I always, you know, I always wish people were alive, but lingered really, really a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you live to 140. And it's an uncomfortable 140. It's an uncomfortable 140, and everyone that you love goes before you. Long before you. Uh, apparently, the Rangers are playing today, by the way. They're playing the Devils. I'm very excited. for. I'll, I'll watch that, actually. I'll watch that. Because the Devils are just... The Olympics are coming. I'm waiting for that. That's what I'll get excited about. You know what I saw? Is BMX biking becoming a, an, Olympi an Olympic sport? Well, there's always like experimental. And you know, when you think BMX biking, you think the British. What, <laughs> you know, usually... What do you mean, what usually, do you mean the British? Well... Is, is it usually, the British no, that are no. leading this? No, um... Every time there's an Olympics, um, they're allowed to, you know, they try, um, it's not exhibition sports. They are like one time, you know, yeah. they're like, like possible. women's women's Taekwondo. Yeah. I don't know. Did it last? Does I, it, does it still exist? Karate never lasted in the Olympics. Like karate never became a big deal. Yeah. Nobody I, cares for like everybody gets Greco Roman wrestling. Like, okay, that's cool. Like, the Iranian is always, like, the villainous guy with the mustache. And, like, Kurt Angle will come and body slam and will win. Or, like, yeah. the Russians. You know, the yeah. the crazy Ukrainians are really good at that. What I love is that there's this whole, like, um, Romanian, Belarusian, Bulgarian, Algerian. Weightlifting. Weightlifting. Yeah. You're right, exactly. Weightlifters. Like, and they're all, like, like these like Napoleonic complex guys. They're all guys that are like five foot six. They're five foot six. They, and, they and almost all, that wide. They all look like they're stuck in the seventies. Seventies mm -hmm. haircut you, and mustache. Wha, 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 you expect bad porn yeah. music to, to accompany them. You know what's amazing? Like I look forward to when they tear their quad when they're lifting. Oh, and like, they, and they, I love that. I really do. I, I like, you know, the guy that's going to tear his quad, right? Like he, you'll see like his, his, body is just gigantic like he almost looks like a a a, a gorilla like yeah. gigantic chest and like, arms like no body was supposed and to look you know like what that. he'll have like he'll have like really big thighs and like his his calf like half his leg is like it is like a like a stick yeah and the second they lift that you know they tore it yeah or like the chinese women weightlift weightlifters uh. Those are scary people. Oh yeah. Well, I always think that the the woman from some Soviet bloc nation that um, that threw the hammer. It was it was a guy with breasts. It was <laughs> yeah. just it was a guy with breasts. Yeah. Um, Here's Agnes from Chernobyl, <laughs> weighing um, in at 140 kilograms, <laughs> lifting 800 pounds, lifting <laughs> 9,000 pounds, Two pure things. steel. Um, but. But each Olympics has an uh, exhibition. Not, they're not. I forget what they're called. They're called the, the trial sports, basically. Like they and don't they really care. Do you know? The, just... Do you know that tug of war was um was an this Olympic is, sport? It's just silly. That that just silly. <laughs> you know what's funny? Okay, so here's the thing: oh, boxing, the, okay, right? The standing broad jump. I don't, what is that? You stand, stand still and jump and see how far forward you can jump. That is the, so the world bad. record was like eight feet, but that's kind of amazing. Yeah, Will Think Chamberlain. About it. Here's here's my thing. You should thing. look up the sports. Like boxing is. is an Olympic sport, okay, but nobody really knows the boxers. Basketball became important because of the the dream team because we paid. Well, we didn't really pay, well, but they, we they, sent, they they sort of dissolved what being amateur was. Well, the Russians kind of screwed that up because the Russians had their entire hockey team in the Russian army, so they were being housed and fed, and their their job each day was to play hockey. So in essence, they were professional. Well, you know, the players. United States is one of the only countries that 
doesn't fund our Olympic players. Like we right. don't we don't back financially. We don't back them. These countries are financially backing their athletes. Yeah. Like we don't do that. So they look good. Yeah, but you know, when when we started sending like Michael Jordan to the Olympics, that first dream team was pretty funny. I Isn't that when, hysterical? When they played the Chinese for the first time. Oh my god! It was like a hundred and forty to three. Yeah. <laughs> and and what was so cool was they were so in awe of them <laughs> that the Chinese players were like hand Michael Jordan the ball like do it again, do it again. You are so good. Well, you know what's funny? We like globally with basketball, we are not that dominant anymore. Right. We we're not really blowing teams out of the water because no. the European leagues have gotten their act together. Yeah. Absolutely. But what they also do be Well, because we made the game popular, so people started playing it. You know By the way, FIFA rules? Yeah. Uh no, uh F uh what is it? FIBA? Basketball. Now now I'm gonna I I'm gonna basketball European League. Um I think it's like FBA or like FIBA. Not FIFA. I know it's not FIBA. I think it's like FIBA. Uh, yeah, FIBA. Their their rules are totally different than our rules. So like when our guys play them well, now, they, they, it it's, used it's, to be. Remember the key was in in um, European basketball was rhomboid shape instead of a, a rectangular key. The key underneath the net was wider. Like, you know how the key is a rectangle. Yeah. The key in European, I don't know if it is anymore. Was the 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 inside edges was wider than the 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 the, uh, the points under the net were further apart than the points furthest away from the net. Do you remember? Do you remember in ninety two when we no it wasn't ninety two I think hey, it was I, you um, know I, you, did you ever watch basketball where there wasn't a three point shot? No. Yeah. See, I grew up in an age where there wasn't a three point shot. No, I don't. I don't remember that. So who won the nineteen eighty eight uh, basketball? Uh, oh, the Soviets won. The Soviets won in 88. Very interesting. Well, we protested one of the Olympics, right? And then we had our own Philadelphia Olympics, like our mm. own mini version, right. with like anti-Soviet teams, which is hysterical. Yep. I find this really the funny. The torch started out this week in, in, uh, in Athens. Oh, did it? Yeah. Or Olympia, actually. Olympia. So we won 2008. We lost 2004 to Argentina. So we've won almost every year, by the way. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I was saying. I remember we got our ass kicked to Puerto Rico in one of these games. Yeah. I guess. I guess we're good again. Okay, I think I found a list of everything that's played. Like the crappy sports. Yeah. I'm dying you know to I, know. You know what I've never seen, and I so want to see played team handball. Is that is that an Olympic sport? Yeah. Like I don't think and it's huge in other parts of the world. I don't think. Do you know what? It, do you know what it is? There. It's not handball like you know it. It looks like. A cross between, it's like soccer, but you carry the ball in your hand, you travel the ball in your hand, mm -hmm. and it's played on something the size of a basketball court, and the net is basically in the spot at the bottom of the key. Okay. So, and it's huge in the rest of the world. Um, we've got archery, uh, beach volleyball, But give boxing. me like the stupid ones. Like every, every, we all know why people watch beach volleyball. Like we get yeah. that. We know why we're watching that. We watch it for the Brazilian team. Oh. Here's here's um trampoline? Is that a real sport? Really? Like hopping on a trampoline? That's so silly. R rhythm gymnastics, that's oh, mountain biking is is this and BMX biking. There's canoe sprint. I never knew that. Okay, that's like that's like speed canoeing. Speed canoe. Okay. But give me like a dumb one. Have you ever watched track cycling? In a velodrome, that's the that's the stadium where track. Yeah, are. like they're like sideways, and, it's, and, it's, and they're like they're going so fast that that they're practically like sideways. That's kind of wild. And they wear the hats that look like the top of an exclamation point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Um, but give me, give me, give me. Is that is that beat? What is that? Polo? Uh, what are they playing? Water polo. Water polo is another one. Water that's polo. Is, one. And but you know water. They polo, drown each other. But water polo is one of the hardest things to do and those guys they're they're like calorie intake while they're in training is like 12 to 14,000 calories a day. So is Michael Phelps in the Olympics again this year? I know that they were making a big deal out well, of it. Well, I he's, you know, no one's in it until they make the team and no one makes the team until like the next few weeks. I saw a commercial for him. Yeah. I guess maybe he made it already. He qualified, yeah. but there was a commercial on NBC. I used to watch those qualifying. So hockey, we have the hockey, we have the basketball. Yeah, field hockey, you have men's field hockey in the Olympics. 
Did you hear about that kid in the, in the field hockey team out in Long Island? No. They didn't have a boys field hockey team. You know, so he's from the British Isles. He's got like a like a Scottish accent and he's like 4 foot like 3 and he's on the he's on the senior team. He's an 8th grader and he's really good, but he's on a team with all these tall leggy blondes. It's hysterical. He, he looks like so happy. It's <laughs> like he's like I love this. You know, pick on me because I'm on a girls team. I don't care because I'm on a girls team. I found I found one. Ice dancing was in the Olymp- Olympics. Yeah, I th- curling is dumb. They made a big deal out of curling this year. Remember, like well, a couple of years the Norwegians ago. Norwegians pants. Yeah, like every, curling was it cross country. Uh, the luge is silly. That's the another one. The luge is rude. Two man, two man, two man luge. Very just rude. V- it's b- homoerotic. B- very homoerotic. Very. Two I, guys I in, 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 in spandex. But baseball's not part of it. There's no baseball in uh, Olympics. Yeah, there is. No, I yeah. don't think so. Yeah. I don't think anymore. Or did they did they get rid of it? Oh, I think they did get rid yeah. of some stuff. Yeah, I think they got rid of it. I, I could swear to you, baseball got eliminated. Uh, baseball and softball were voted out in 2012. Yeah, so baseball's out of it. But there's no mixed martial arts. There's boxing, but there's no MMA. I think a lot of people would pay to see MMA. Like, there's a lot of these sports that people would want to see, but they're not in. I would the just Olympics. like to see like like some 14 pound gymnast kick the shit out of like some Algerian. <laughs> yeah. Algerian that would be like so cool. No, I think some you, Algerian weightlifter. Come I, I, on. This this is what I would do if I was in charge of the Olympics. Which God, I hope one day I will be in charge of the, uh, the Olympics. Yeah, I, I would. I want to see the the, the arc of that <laughs> of, of of the path. To I that. would go back to the core of the Olympics. I would have people just fighting. That's all the Olympics would be. I would I would get rid of the the the, the luge. I would get rid of uh the, well the bobsled. Somebody died last year, so I would keep that because possibly something could happen. But I would just have grown men, overly steroid injected grown men that are maybe 180 pounds over their weight class, just beating each other up. That's what the Olympics should be. I guarantee you every country will get behind it, and they will dump so much money. Rugby is a game now. Rugby is a cool sport, though. Yeah. Rugby is like a tough sport. I can't knock rugby. Soccer. I like soccer. You know, I I once saw one of the Olympic, because we don't pay for our athletes, there was a guy that, he he finished pretty high. I think he got it like a silver in the last Olympics. He was an archer, archery. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is how he used to practice. He lived in a cul-de-sac. Okay, okay. Picture a cul-de-sac. Now on the end of the cul-de-sac, there are two houses facing each other. He okay. used to go in his backyard, open the back door to his garage. Okay, open his garage door so now he can see out into the cul-de-sac. Across the street, the person would open their garage door and open the back door into their backyard Uh and he used to put a target in his neighbor's backyard oh that's funny so this guy was always he never didn't he never you know they asked him did you ever you know hit either of the garages And he was like no because this guy's like greatest variation was like you know three inches like ever okay and he used to get friends who used to sit with like cell phones and stuff and go Okay, are we clear? Are we clear? And he used to practice his shots in his neighborhood that way. That's funny. But they used to like stop cars, you know, while he shot an arrow. And then, you know, they'd go, go ahead. That's really funny. Isn't that wild? I'm, um, I'm just looking here for some more stupid Olympic stuff. I'm trying to look for the new, um, the new sports. New Olympic sports. And then we got to wrap it up in a couple of minutes. But I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think anybody cares about it anymore. We're just so oversaturated with the sports. Well, there's there's yachting, too. Yeah, this is stupid. <laughs> like, it, like, it's so The oldest Olympian that ever won, won for yachting. That, what, what do you... But that's not, that's not a sport. Well, you know, some people you're, say you're, the moment that you're... Like, I don't consider NASCAR a sport. It's not a sport. It's I'm really sorry. It's a bad commute. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I get it. It it's takes skill. skill it's a skill, but it is not a sport. Yeah, neither is, you know, like, you know, well, you know, it's Ball, so- Bowling is not a sport. <laughs> any any sport where you can drink at the same time, not a sport. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, you know, if they let it, I, I think people would probably drink during baseball. 
you know, like just in the dugouts. No, I drink during baseball. Yes, but you're watching. I'm talking about if you were playing. If I was playing, I would still be drinking during baseball. Yeah, I totally see that. Uh, go to our website, guysfromqueens.com. Uh, we're going to wrap it up for today. Lon, uh, your ride is coming up. People could donate. Yeah, if you're going to donate, man, just go to www.aidslifecycle.org. Uh, get my put in my name or my participant number, which is four two five nine. And if you were even thinking about it, please by Friday, by Friday really will count towards this ride. It will count towards my total, and and it just makes my ride all that easier. Okay. Very very cool. Uh, Thanks, thank guys. you, Lon. All right. Uh, and we'll see you all next week. And I'm just saying good night, everybody. Good night.